We're going to be moving on to the next part of our program tonight, and that is the panel segment, which I'm very excited for. So we're going to get straight into it, into meeting our lovely couples, three lovely couples that we have here tonight. So first up, we have Candice and Alex. These lovebirds have been happily dating for nine months, and I say happily because the way they look at each other is the way I look at my Nano's chicken. So please make them feel welcome, Candice and Alex. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, next we have the lovely Joel and Kimberly. This young, radiant, newlywed couple is a sight for sore eyes and compliment each other like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Please make them feel welcome, Joel and Kimberly. Awesome. <laughs> Okay, and last but not least, certainly not least, is our most mature and experienced um, couple on the panel tonight. With six kids, two schools to run, and a marriage to maintain, if I, would you, if I were you guys, I would listen in very closely to this couple. Please give it up for Rachel and Sunny. Okay, so thank you guys for being here. First of all, I would just like to say um, it's not easy to come up here and be able to um, put your relationship in a bit of a vulnerable state. So we appreciate you guys being up here tonight. So we're going to get, before we get straight into the questions, we want to know just a little bit more about you guys. So I'm going to give you all an opportunity to just, in a couple of sentences, say a little bit about yourself. So first of all, how long have you guys been in your relationship for? Second of all, how did you meet? I know we all love a how, good how did you meet story. And lastly, one word you would use to describe your relationship. So is it fun? Is it adventurous? Is it sassy? So let's start down the end with Sunny and Rachel. So I'm fortunate enough to know these guys um, as family friends outside of this, and I know them as a Christian couple. They're such a good example to everyone that they surround themselves with. So I'm very excited to hear what you guys have to say. So you guys can kick it off for us. So firstly, how long have you been in your relationship? How did you meet? And one word you would use to describe your relationship. Good evening, everyone. Um, yeah, we, we've been married for 18 years. Oh, 19 years. Um, yeah, not, happily married for 19 years. Um, and what was the second? So how did you meet? How did we meet? Yeah, no, that was, that was really uh, exciting. We, um, we met at a youth rally. Uh, so it was a church um, organized event, so which is which is awesome because this is a church organized event tonight. Yeah. So you might be meeting your uh, future spouse here. Ooh. So it's really exciting. I really like to promote uh, <laughs> church organized events, and so it was a youth rally. Um, well, we haven't got too much time, but it was the second <laughs> time I ever went to church and I met him. Wow! Bonus. Okay, and your last question: one word you would use to describe your relationship. Well, that's, that's, oh, wow. that's a tough one. Busy. 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 Yeah. I tried to find another one, but busy does fit. Good one. Okay, so next we'll move on to Joel and Kimberly. So if I'm right, you guys got married last year? Yes, in November. How was that? Yeah, it was great. Stressful time, but it was great. Stressful time. Well, congratulations on tying the knot. Thank so. You. First question, how long have you guys been in a relation? Oh, maybe how long have you guys been married? So we've been together for two and a half years, but married for five months. Awesome. Okay, and how did you meet? Um, well, work. yeah, work. So we both worked at Gilson College. Um, how did we meet? I actually can probably blame Kimberly. Well, I can blame Kimberly's parents for us meeting. They... Um, kind of set the, the match up. I wasn't really interested in a relationship mm -hmm. and neither was, neither was Kimbo. And parents obviously saw something that we hadn't seen mm. and here we are. Awesome. Okay, and one word you would use to describe your relationship. Oh, 
I, honor. That's that's honor. honor. Good one. That, that Good would, one. I don't know how to put it as like an adverb or a word. It's like usable in a sentence, but honor is honor. Whatever. Awesome. Okay, so now we're going to move on to Candice and Alex, and I'm lucky enough to know these guys also personally outside of this too, and I definitely know that they are two very in love. Um, people. They are always staring at each other whenever I'm with them. So uh, for, uh, how long have you guys been in a relationship? Um, nine months. Nine months. And how did you guys meet? Um, Alex had come to my church, so Roval Listerfield, mm. uh, to do a afternoon program for the youth. And um, ever since then, we've started talking and it just went from there. Awesome. And one word you would use to describe your relationship? Um, as I think about it, I think, and in all glory to God for this, but I think um, forgiveness. Yeah, and yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to stick with you guys here and we're going to get straight into the big questions. Okay, so... I know that you guys are still a bit relatively new to the church. So um, how long have you guys been in the church for? Um, I was baptised 13th December um, 2014. Um, so how many years is that? Oh, that's pretty long, like actually. Four. Yeah. <laughs> that's quite long. Um, okay. And Candice? Um, I started going to the Adventist church um, end of 2014. So, awesome. yeah. And shout out to Roville Church if there's any yes. Roville members in the house. Okay, so that brings me to my first question for you guys. What is the main difference between your view and experience in a secular relationship from your past versus now being in a Christ-filled relationship? Um, for me, it was quite simple. I think the, the biggest difference was standards. Mm. Um, I thought I had high standards back then. When, you, when I became a Christian, um, it made those standards look very, very rubbish. Mm. And so, yeah, I would definitely say that the biggest difference is um, is just the standard in a responsibility to have a certain character. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I would say, um, you know, when a person has a relationship with God... There's, um, there's accountability. Um, so knowing that having that awareness that they're always accountable to God, um, you know, you know, in how they carry themselves, their character and the decisions they make and how they treat other people. So I think accountability is a big one. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Okay. So we all know the quote, you are your environment. So the question I have for you guys is how did your friends affected affect how you viewed your relationship now and back then in your past? Um, I think for me, um, as you said before, being pretty new to the Adventist church um, before that, um, and still now, um, a lot of my close friends aren't Adventist or, um, you know, go to church or anything like that. So um, for me, there's definitely a lot of advice that comes through that um, isn't always um, aligned with um, the values um, mm. within the church. And so... Yeah. Um, you know, before coming into the church, um, my view of, um, you know, relationships and, and sex and all of that kind of stuff was very obscured. So, and even um, just being just so brainwashed by the media as well and the TV shows I used to watch and um, what I surrounded myself with and music and um, so definitely, um, you know, after joining the Adventist Church, that, that's definitely changed and... Um, but, yeah, like um, being surrounded by like-minded people is a huge help in yeah. um, forming good relationships. That's very true, yeah. And Alex? Um, yeah, mine were pretty bad. Um, I didn't think... Um, I don't think I got much good advice on relationships at all from much of my friends. And um, it was because... Um, I don't know if this will lead into another question, but I'll just say it for the sake of the question. Um, so I, I've had a lot of relationships and the most before I was a Christian and um, a lot of my friends uh, weren't good with their partners 
and um, and you know, you know, I, I played rugby, and there's a certain kind of um, uh, environment and, and talk that's just natural and that's mm-hmm. normal, and 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 that that was kind of part of um, my, my lifestyle and. Um, my friends had bad relationships mm. and I had a bad view and um, it actually caused, my friends caused a lot of problems for my relationship. Um, but as a Christian now, I find I get um, the most wisdom and advice from um, happily married couples who, who've yeah. experienced, um, you know, the, the stuff that it takes to to make a marriage good and that's yeah but I mean, yeah with friends I, I kind of struggle that okay. <laughs> Need yeah so we're still staying with you guys so my next question for you is because being I feel like Christian dating and secular dating is quite different and I feel like in a Christian relationship there are boundaries that you need to set so my question to you guys is what boundaries have you both set in your own relationship? Um, it's a hard one. Um, I think, um, obviously, you know, not sleeping together and, um, you know, sleeping in the same bed together. Um, um, what else is there? I guess not making out, um, anything that's going to lead you into like temptation to like, you know, one thing being led to another, um, and just, you know, obviously from personal experiences, we know what happens when that happens and, um, you know, preventing all those things that put you at risk yeah. of doing that. So. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I was just going to add as well that um, I think an important boundary that I, and I've spoken to Candice a lot about is the boundaries we have in, in my own life. Mm. So I could even say, like, I had boundaries for my relationship if I was in a relationship. So, for example... I'm not going to watch pornography because that will affect mm. our, our relationship. I'm not going to listen to certain music. I'm not going to feed myself rubbish because I know. Yeah. I know that will um, affect us. And so I, I need boundaries for my own personal yeah, own personal life. Yeah, awesome. So this one is for Candice. So Candice, I know Alex was the one who did pursue you. So my question to you is how has your partner, Alex, shown intentionality and willingness to commit to your relationship whilst dating? Um, Communication is a big thing. Um, And just the effort he makes in, um, you know, wanting to spend time with me. So um, I think time is really important. Um, Mm -hmm you know, the time you give to someone, you know, time's precious. Yeah. And um, when someone he makes time for you in their life, it says a lot about, um, you know, how how they think of you. And so, um, Alex, um, so pretty much from the time we met, there was only one, there's only one day we didn't go, um, where we didn't speak to each other. So ever since then, we've always been yeah. in contact. And, um, and yeah, so just definitely communication and, um, you know, we're both really busy people um, yeah. and so the fact that we make an effort to um, um, make time for each other I think is a really big one mm-hmm. um, and just all the other little things that he's done, I, I won't go through all of them, but um, just little um, things he's done for me which which mean a lot to me yeah. um, has definitely um, shown um, how much he um, cares about awesome. me and is committed and, yeah. Awesome. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. So we're going to move on to Joel and Kimberly. Now, because you guys are recently married, I've got this question in store for you. How did you know it was time that you guys were ready individually and as a couple to get married? So like Kimberly, did you wake up one day and say, honey, it's time to put a ring on it? Or how did it all happen? (laughs) Uh, well, first, I just want to preface how Kimbo and I work. So just mm. give a, a bit of backstory. There is a good chance, no, not a good chance, it will happen that I will say something and there's a good chance that Kimbo is going to jump in and correct <laughs> it because I have a bad habit of set putting putting things with good intentions out there that probably could have been worded a bit better. And my wife she's is, good at rephrasing she is very good at rephrasing things. Awesome. Um, and, yeah, she can see things through my eyes. Um, how did we know it was time? Well, um, for Kimbo and I, I guess i got to go into our story a bit. 
we didn't, we weren't so good at setting boundaries early on in our relationship and nearly four months into our relationship we had slept together we were basically starting to live together and we weren't at a healthy place um when we came together we had good intent when we got together yeah we had good intentions for what our relationship was going to be we both wanted a spiritual partner but um like what jose said you know when you pursue after god you know it'll, it'll work for your relationship but um as our relationship went on on in the early stages we both stopped pursuing after god started pursuing after each other yeah um yeah ourselves and yeah so we we stumbled at first and that led to how we knew that god was telling us we had to get married or well, not had to get married we basically had a choice of either breaking up calling mm-hmm. it quits there or we had a choice to get married and um so for us it was actually at at a big camp that we went to um and we had both been battling and talking about like where we were meant to go was was our relationship uh, a mistake that we needed to just kind of go our separate ways or were we gonna was god gonna use this to his glory yeah. and um so we we were at some uh, a big camp and um jeremy anderson was t- talking and he was he was sharing his story and basically like the holy spirit said to me you guys are you guys are got to get married like not no more of this this stuff just you know stuffing around and just lusting after each other yeah i need you to get get real with each other okay. you got anything to add um, yeah, for, for Joel, he his relationship with the Holy Spirit and God is very much like voice. So he hears and then he obviously tries to do what he hears. Um, for me, it's not so much that. It's more um, – how did I explain that before in the car? <laughs> um, I guess uh-huh. like – you. Uh, I have to pray. So I have to pray to God to ask him to um, to explain, uh, like, to, I don't know. Hey? Direct you. In yeah, direct me in the right way. And um, in, in this instance at Big Camp, I was feeling... Um, I guess beforehand I was very selfish with my relationship with Joel and myself. I wanted what was best for me, what was um, what I thought a relationship should look like for me. And I wasn't really there um, looking at what we needed together. Mm-hmm. And so my um, prayers switched from just um, let him see what like I want him to see or like let him understand me more and I was then saying Lord help me understand him more help me talk the, to him the way he will understand yeah. um so it was just shifting and um yeah so that was that was a good um that was how the holy spirit worked in that um area of the big camp situation and then we both made that decision at big camp look we need to get married and we made that decision together mm. and yeah awesome okay last question to you guys before we cut to the intermission um is what was something that you weren't prepared for or something that took you by surprise being in a marriage so i guess like fast forwarding to when we were married and like when, when we made that decision it wasn't a decision of our oh, like you know we've got to just get married because of how this looks it was a a decision of we need to actually realign where this relationship's going Mm -hmm. otherwise it's it's heading to failure because christ wasn't at the the center of our relationship and when we got married um we, we we still like by no means were we perfect from then on like but god was definitely active in our in our relationship that God was stripping away the characteristics that caused the mistake in our in our relationship early on and God in that period leading up to us getting married was stripping away those things that were holding us back. Mm. And um the the hardest thing we encountered in our relationship was actually 4 days after we were married. Um so 4 days after we were married 
we so we had a welcome board at our wedding and it was just like stained glass and it had our names on it and we'd actually hung it up above our bed. And so it was just a stupid move, stupid move on my part. <laughs> um, it was hung up with like those, yeah, Velcro stickies. They didn't, they didn't hold. Um, and so what happened was it fell on our face and in the middle of the night, like 1 a.m., maybe 2 a.m., like the morning, like glass went everywhere and... Yeah, so what ended up happening was I I was put off work for three months because it had lacerated through a tendon, an artery, yeah. and, like, cut into the bone on my thumb. It wasn't, like, thank like thank the Lord because um, I guess a bit of background on the situation of actually what happened when we woke up. I had miraculously, I have no real memory of how it happened, but I, I had the majority of the glass on me and I... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So normally we, sorry, sorry. Normally we sleep like on our stomachs and for some reason we were both lying on our backs. So I really see that as God because um, that never happens. We never sleep on our stomach. Yeah. And the reason why that's important was when Kimberly woke up, well, when I got to Kimberly, she didn't move an inch. She had um, probably two shards of glass like that in a triangle, like razor sharp triangle sitting right on her throat, like right there. Had she like leaned up like you would to get up out of bed, it would have like lacerated, like sliced her throat to bits. And like, so that was like the hardest thing. And the reason why that was the hardest thing we faced was in the past I had, I guess, been the main worker in the family. Like I'd, I'd kind of, I guess, provided for us too because um, – after we decided to get married and got engaged, we started having to save for a wedding. So we combined our bank accounts and stuff like that. And do you want to share what you shared in the car? No, you don't remember? Okay. <laughs> do you remember? No, it's all right, I'll share. So I guess for us, um, the dynamics of our relationship have come in stages. And early on in our relationship, like uh, my spiritual gift, I guess, and my just oh physical gift is service mm. and so my for me like doing housework that sort of stuff is just I love doing it mm. so I naturally tended towards doing those sorts of things like I happily would cook happily clean do washing um all those sorts of things like I guess untraditional things for for men in generations gone past but yeah like he was the housewife yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll speak I'll speak uh yeah he was definitely the housewife the the wife in the relationship and the husband in the relationship. Um, as much as I, I, I was there for both of us, um, he because he's so um, service orientated, it sh he just draws to doing that. And I let him do that because if I didn't, then obviously he wouldn't feel used. So um, to his full potential, anyway. So um, yeah, it sounds selfish when I say it, but yes, he he's a great man. Every, everyone needs a, a husband that he get, that can do everything. Okay. <laughs> I'm affirming you. Yeah, I know. That's true. He doesn't. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm going on a tangent. Okay, back to where, what we we're talking about. Um, yeah. So when he got injured, obviously he couldn't do those things anymore. Uh, we went to the. We spoke to the surgeon. He said, "You can't work. You can't drive. Um, you can't do anything that you normally like active stuff." So soccer was out of the picture. Um, everything that he would. Shower, yeah, he couldn't shower himself for three months. Okay, shower was a little bit less. Like, he could shower himself after, like, how many? A month? Yeah. Yeah, he couldn't shower himself for a month. So, um, yeah, there was me. <laughs> um, and it was – I had a choice. I had a choice to either be negative about this and be like, what, like, I have to do everything, you know, and just have this, like – negative approach to this but um yeah um I guess because we'd been strong we'd been trying to be strong in our faith and our relationships with God individually um it created me to have um a positive approach to this so I instead of being like oh I have to work now full time and you get to stay home um it was more like I'm I'm working to provide for us because like this situation we're in, um, I need to step up and be a wife and care for you. So, like it would every every morning, uh, I'd 
go to get up, go to work and then come back and I have to shower him and then like prepare dinner or clean the room, um, do exercises with him, um, take him to his appointments, drive him wherever he needs to go. Um, and that's weird because I, I don't like driving. I get really bad anxiety. So it was a challenge for me, but a good challenge. Um, but anyways... Uh, we slowly realised that our income wasn't enough to support us. So um, that was a challenge. That was probably the hardest challenge for us to be on one wage and um, nearly always in negative every week and still pulling through, like God really had our backs, mm. um, even though it was a pretty, pretty big pickle. Do you want to add? Yeah, so I guess, for, for sorry, I, I don't want to seem like we're taking too long, but I, I, I do want to share this because I feel like it's really valuable. The hardest thing for us was that in me getting injured, the, the job that Kimbo was working was at Gilson College and it was not as well paying as the job that I did. So when she went back to her full-time work, the income we had previously barely got by on, which was mine, was even less and now we're at a place of actually in the negative. And the the hardest thing for us was choosing between whether we were going to um, focus on our relationship or we were going to focus on our income. And the hard, that was the hardest thing, being able to say, no, our relationship comes first, regardless of if we're destitute, homeless, like any situation we're in, the hardest thing was saying, whatever happens, our relationship comes first. And yeah, and, and like that, but that was like the starting of us seeking out God as an individual, like mm -hmm. us becoming passionate for for God's calling on our lives. 